I guess this channel's becoming a bit of a higgledy-piggledy, you know, we had a cycling video, there's some shell videos, got a new agreements podcast. I'm still working on the aqua bike as well. We will get there, but I need a bit of help to sort of screw this all together because I figured out the mechanism now, that can of tuna really came in handy. The propeller's gonna go off the side with the cog. Anyway, I won't bore you with that now. Today is a very, very exciting day. It's the first day I'm going to see the Swirl bus at Jim's Yard. We are partnering with Shred and Butter, who worked with Louis on his double decker, and Josh, who helps in the woods, has worked with them as well. So it was always gonna happen, this partnership. And I haven't actually seen it in person yet. Well, there's a whole pile of people coming on the tour, which I'll let you into as we go along. But we're just gonna find out a lot about it today. My neighbors th must think, what the hell are these little pieces of metal at the back of my parking spot? Basically just gonna take you on the journey today. We'll see what's going on with this bus and see whether I've made a, a good or a bad choice on behalf of the gang. But this year it's different. The swell's going democratic. It's going community owned. Shush. Thank you. Oh no. Show me how can I see when the world's not fair and growing slowly take part of the world's creeping. So originally when we came up with the swell plan, we were gonna go by train because we wanted it to be low carbon round the outside of Europe to make sure everyone that we've met along the way felt included. You know, we've done a few different years of this community, village, Corcovado, flourishing life project and want to make sure that everyone has a chance to be connected in really. Come visit people at their homes who have travelled a long, long way to come see us. Trains turn out to be super expensive and also with all this corona uncertainty, we need to have more control of our environment. Also, tour buses are super expensive. I looked at one of these posh, like Lady Gaga style tour buses, way too expensive, like a thousand pounds a day. So that's when I spoke to Jim. We saw this bus under four grand to get it into his yard. My theory was with the first hut, Betty in the woods, we bought it, I thought it was a good deal. We enjoyed it, I guess attached that story to it. And then we sold it and I bought it for seven grand, sold it for nine grand. So I thought it'd be nice if we could do that again, but share in it. Because me and Andy, who bought the first hut together, it was really fun to share that risk. And okay, we made a grand each on top, but we may not have, we may have lost a grand each. But we knew it was an okay deal and it would probably work. So that's kind of how I'm feeling about the bus. Three, four grand. Everybody who wants to come on the bus, on the tour, has skin in the game. You don't get to buy a seat unless you're coming. You don't get to come unless you buy a seat. Not that we won't help people out if they're short of cash, but you see the principle. And then when we sell it, we either make money together, we lose money together, whatever it is, we do it together. And we're sharing in the decision making, in the journey, it's all shared. I partnered with Jim and said, hey look, we'll share the upside with you if we make money. And then I called Andy and I said, hey, I've got a thousand, do you have 3,000? When the other owners of the bus pay me their money, I'll be able to send you your money back. And we're in that position right now. So this week I can send Andy all his money back and I can get my 600 pounds back. So I'm just down to a 400 pound investment like everybody else. And then when it comes to borders, I think we can argue that this is our home. So we are quarantining in the home. You know, as far as Belgium is concerned, we're coming to them as a, as a family that live together in this bus. And so that's how they will deal with us, hopefully. Also, it means that if borders really are a no-go when it comes down to it, and we literally get turned away at the borders, which, plenty of experience of that we will go around the outside of whatever we can so if that's around the outside of the UK so be it if we can get into Europe then great so that's the thinking yeah lost in the silence you make up the rules to search you for guidance with nothing to lose now I'm begging you it's like I'm in the right place with one bus oh look there's some buses there is some buses <laughs> I'm just following the little bus road, really. <laughs> there he is. You basically just follow the trail towards more and more buses, don't you? Yeah, and then you're like, well, there's one bus. Well, there's five. That, now there's 15 buses. I'm probably close, yeah. <laughs> So 
it's all gone a bit mental, has it? It's gone absolutely bizarre. Yeah, yeah. What do you think that's down to? Is it to do with the, the climate pandemic. and stuff? It's the pandemic. People are going staycation mad. Are they? Yeah. It used to be 90% corporate world. Yeah, yeah. Promotions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now it's individuals. And are they people wanting to live in them, or people who are wanting their their staycation? Travel Europe in them because no one wants to get on a plane. Airbnbs. Yeah. Campsites. I've got four or five units going up to campsites. Right. Cafes. So it's not so many people saying I can't afford my house. I'm going to live in it. It is that. Is it? There is definitely that side. Yeah. With people going. This has made us realise we're living beyond, beyond our, our means, means. Yeah. You know what I mean? like, Interesting. Well, you said you might normally have like three or four on at a go. Fifteen. Fifteen. That's I'm mental. <laughs> mental. Too much. And you've got this bad boy for you. It's the pry lining. That's as far as we got. But wow. It's made out of aircraft, Danny. Everything's like a circle in there. So we've had to kind of get mad creative with shapes and pieces and bend yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. This one cost us nine and a half grand. Really? Yeah. But oh, they go for much more, more, don't they? Like we're polishing at the minute. This is 10 days into polishing. Really? So oh. Two grand into polishing it and he's 50% of the way around. I can see the difference yeah. here. And, then, and that's not even finished. <laughs> Pull it back to the mirror, then he goes over it again. But everything's doubled in price now. Yeah. Everyone's gone camper van man. Goodness. Oh no, losing every part, I leave it to the sea. Oh, don't you hold it in your eyes. Don't How much are these coming in for, these big shells? You landed at about 15. 15 from America? This is a yoga studio. A yoga studio? Yeah. I never thought of that before, having a yoga studio mobile. Yeah. There's just enough room sideways. Have you not lost your marbles at all? Yeah, I've lost some weeks ago. <laughs> camper, camper, camper. Hope is not enough. Louis lived the adventure bust. Is it? It's going off. In my blood. So obviously it was ready to go before the pandemic. So that is a decent state uh, sink work top here. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. That's like a whole... Studio, lovely. Lots of inspiration. Yes, in my blood. yes look at this bad boy. <laughs> oh, he's a little stubby. I wasn't sure how big he was. He's cute. We had that quick call and it all just came together in four seconds. Yeah, pretty much. And you said, oh, hang on a minute, that one wants buy-in because it's quite cheap. Yeah, 100%. Having now seen it, it's as good as the door, if not better. Really? It runs really well. What about all that rusty stuff? It's just surface rust. Doesn't matter. I mean, we can knock that back and say. It looks pretty good compared to some of the some of the other shells that are here. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't know if I'm right. Yeah. That looks like a proper welding job. What's that? What's all that about? It's just where two panels join. Yeah. And if it's like silicon. Okay, it's yeah. A I mean, obviously, we need to sort this masking tape jobby out here. The overall feel yeah, as we're rolling into towns in Europe, I think it looks quite respectable off the bat. With this red and white stuff, do you think that's cheesy, tacky, or do you reckon it no, could be all right? The, but the problem you'll find is if you want to sort out the rest of it, yeah. matching that paint will be impossible. Oh, I see. So yeah. So it's almost as easy to, to do it all back yeah. and do it in black. To, I'd leave it as it. Yeah. If it was me, yeah. what you're doing. You could take your eye away from that yeah. by doing a big logo. Yeah, yeah. White vinyl over there first. Yeah. And it's like, you know, on tour, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, nice. Because we're in for best part of four grand at the moment. Yeah. If we start spending loads and loads on it, it might struggle yeah. to get its money back. Yeah. I'm glad it didn't come like that, mate. <laughs> but this is an old 60s Winnebago, rare. That is amazing that you can look at that and go, oh, oh, yes, please. I saw this on this morning about this exact thing. It's actually value in it. Look at those seats. Look yeah, how they... cool those seats are. Yeah, but. Do you know what I mean? Like, that is so retro. It's cool, but they, I can also. I'd, I'd pay 100 quid for them. Um, oh, I see what you mean. You, you put them in a VW value, or something. Other than their retro seat, weird stuff. Okay, understood. All right, I'll go in. You go in. I'll stand at the doorway. Mate, it looks mint inside. Yeah. This is actually in good nick, guys. This is actually, like, desirable to be in. Oh, here she is. Look at that little TV guy at the front. Oh, that looks quite nice, actually, to be fair. George, are there any surprises here? Little stereo up here. Sound system. Josh, any thoughts? Very welcome. Guys, anybody who's coming on the tour, anybody watching these videos, please let me know what you're thinking here. Does this logic of what we're talking about make sense? Sunroofs are pretty cool. 
Love to know what you're thinking. Love to know. <laughs> and, then, and then that's the exhaust pipe that came off. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering if we could have like a unit at the back here. And uh, tell me what you think about this, genuinely, because I'm not yeah. very far along in the thinking of it. Bunk bed plus storage stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then two sets of four seats facing each other with a table. Well, let me ask you the other way around. What would you do in terms of easy layout with the easy, bus? Easy would be to keep the seats because they're nice. And yeah. In a good condition. They'll be comfortable. They've got seat belts on them or whatever. They're usable. Yeah. And you could easily swap them around so they're facing each other. The seats could be face right here. Yeah. Then still have space to do bunk bed storage here and then potentially two more single beds. Yeah. Oh, single beds this way. Or double the sofas. Oh, that's interesting. I hadn't so thought of that because that would keep the door a bit, wouldn't it? Yeah. And then people wouldn't have to be stacked on top of each other. See how much room there actually is if you lie down here. <laughs> there's actually, oh right, there's actually... Well, I go left to right. Open this door, you have a little bit of storage, yeah. and then left to right bunk. But then from that oh. bunk, you have a single bed that way, and a single bed along the wall. Got you. Then you have the chairs. And uh, okay, seats. yeah, so, okay, so okay. So then you make it a four berth. Understood, four berth at the back. So that would basically get rid of this row. And, and it, the would, road. it would get rid of this row as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. So then you do still have eight plus the driver. It looks great, man. Those little yellow catches, I think they lift and twist. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then that's now released from that track, and you can slide it forwards and backwards. Slide. So you slide it to a wow. where it can come out. So when you're parked up, you've got power. Mm -hmm. You could chuck a basic solar panel on the roof. Yeah, that'd be nice. You could charge up that leisure battery. Yeah. If we were to whack this again on eBay now that it's in your yard and it's ready for conversion, what do you reckon it would go for? I wouldn't even need to put it on eBay, so like five. five yeah. Enough. If you do some little bits to it, but that's six. Yeah, so if we put a grand into it, we probably won't come up shy. You're never going to lose money. No. Absolutely. And you're going to get your tour done. Yeah, well, that's the main thing. So it's, it's under seven and a half tons. Yeah. So it's what we know as light goods here. So it's just a minibus license. Okay. Um, what do you reckon that is a day or, or two training just, or something yeah it's literally even a heavy goods vehicle is three days training test oh that's all right that's so, all right that's all right just i'll google mini like bus license just finding someone that can drive it for you well we got george who's got a big one of these long 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 big uh, music studio version so he's one driver but can't make it do it all then no because we're going to like greece and we're going far it's really yeah. far so you need at least two if not three of us driving the whole point of the project is sharing sharing yeah. the ownership sharing the yeah. responsibility if you can drive you can pass the test yeah yeah it's not learning to drive again like no you did doing a car it's just showing them that you've got the ability to drive a bigger okay so mini bus and license just, you know, if any of you want to get involved in helping tweak this or put some stuff in or learn a bit Drop me a line and I'll put you in touch with Josh and you can come down with him and shadow him or, or help or whatever it is one day. Best to do it that way and then we'll keep it all nice and cushy and tidy. Let's get on the blower, Josh. If anyone's interested in this uh, wacky world of buses, mate, where, what should they do? Uh, weird and wonderful. Yeah. It's bizarre. You think this is mental. It's too much. It's not too much. <laughs> we have built ridiculous things. <laughs> so yeah, uh, come down and see us. Get in touch by Dave. Google Shred and Butter. Yeah, Shred and Butter. I'll put the links in below and uh, yeah, just come down. He's a friendly chap. I gotta say, this is the joy of community because I've never worked with Jim. Oh, that's Shred and Butter, by the way, if you're looking for whether you're on the right website. I've never worked with Jim myself, but I know so many other people that have worked with him. Ultimately, he's come out fair. He's got the fairness vibe. I don't know how he feels about me, but he might feel the same way that he knows so many people that have done stuff with me. But actually, when it comes to it, I've never done a project that's more easy. I trust his skills, his awareness. Like when he said, oh, that's a good bus that needs buying. I was like, yeah, it must be then. That sounds good, looks good. Stacked up to me, the little things I know about it. But when people talk about being in community, often it sounds just a bit twee. I think what sometimes people don't get is if you do something nice or good or fair with one person and you're not connected in any other way, it's all just about whether or not that one person treats you well in the future as to whether you get taken advantage of or whether your investments pay off. But when you're in community, everybody else gets to see how you treat others. And one good or fair turn to one person can be returned to you by any one of 10 or 20 or 30 other people. That's the utility of community is that by being fair over the long haul, you build trust, which makes jobs easier. 
I could get this project so wrong, so wrong on my own. Or I could treat Jim badly and he would have no recourse. But because we're in community, in the extended sort of like we know so many people that are, know each other, you just know it's going to work out. And there is very, very hard to put a price on that. And it's easy to underestimate it until you experience the opposite, where people don't do what they said they're going to do, where things cost 10 times more than they expected, where people shrugged their responsibility, ran away, blamed you. It only takes a few of those experiences to really begin to value simple, fun, easy projects. And that's what I'm looking for in life a lot more now. I'm looking for things to be easy. I've done enough to that things should look easy and should roughly line up. Put your ideas on a postcard, stick them below. Send me an email, Dave at Corcovado. We're coming for you. Whatever happens, we're going to be getting in this bus. And we're going to be going as far as we can. We're coming to see you, Tim and Annie. We're coming to see you, Berivan, Robin, Pauline, Armory. We're coming to the home of democracy, the Agora in Athens. We're coming to get the flavours of the Renaissance from the Medici-powered Da Vinci's. And we're going to come and see you in Anita in France. We're going to experience that river that runs underneath your home and see what creativity flows from there. It's good to make plans in the face of adversity. And it's nice to do it with people that you trust. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you soon. Lost in the silence, you make up the rules. Search for guidance with nothing to lose. So fun. We're so lucky. Ten people, £400 each. We're off on an adventure. First stop in the castle at Armouries in Bruges. I just can't bloody wait. Lost in the silence. Oh, and one thing before I forget. What should we call it? What shall we call it? You know where to put them. Ooh, the crow is so tired.